Hello, in this tutorial, we begin our journey in understanding properties of plane figures or laminas, also called as cross sections. Of course, two properties matter the most, particularly with respect to design of components or design of structures or design of objects using engineering mechanics principles. And we will concentrate on two properties. One is centroid, other one is moment of inertia. However, in this tutorial, we will concentrate only on centroid. After going through this video, we will be able to explain what centroid is, how important to locate the centroid, what is the significance of uh, such points called as centroids over a plane figure, and how to, how to find them out. And in generally speaking, generally speaking, the plane surfaces or laminas or cross sections will come with three important points, properties, three important properties. The first property being the area, which is expressed as square millimeter or square meter. It represents a, a notion of what is the extent of the area? What is the extent? How big the plane surface is? How big the lamina is? Uh, bigger the lamina, more will be the area. So it's a straight forward property which can be understood and which is, uh, which is fundamental to any plane surface. The second one is the orientation. By orientation we, means, uh, we mean where exactly the important point over the plane surface is located, where it is with respect to its coordinates, with respect to some reference axis. And uh, that the important point will decide the orientation of the plane figure or the plane surface. And this predominant point is coming to be called as centroid. And if this is the area and this shape is taken to represent any, any shape, any possible shape, which is useful for engineering purposes. And here there is a centroid that is located and as soon as we locate the centroid, it is possible for us to draw uh, the two fundamental axes, the rectangular axis along x and parallel to x or xx axis and yy axis. When they pass through the centroid, they become centroidal xx axis and centroidal yy axis. In order to locate the centroid of any plane figure, we make use of two coordinates. One is x bar. Um, how where is uh, where is that particular centroid point with respect to y axis or reference axis reference axis which is y axis and or where is the distance and where it is exactly located with respect to x axis denoted by y bar so therefore therefore in our when we when we say that we have located the centroid we only mean that we have found out x bar and y bar distance of the centroid from y axis and distance of the centroid from x axis the third Im and important property is, is the the property that represents that that connotes the shape of the plane figure and it uh, shape by me by means uh, by shape we mean how exactly the different areas of that particular surface is disposed uh, how it is distributed with respect to some axis how the area is arranged with respect to some centra centroidal axis in particular and that property is coming to be called as moment of inertia because these uh, these axes will determine the structural action of the component Therefore, we will first of all define the centroid before we before we uh, develop the methods to, to locate the centroid. And if this is the area, this is the plane lamina. And if this were to be centroid, which is already located, and the definition of the centroid comes like this: centroid may be defined as an imaginary point at which entire area of the surface is assumed to be concentrated or entire area of the surface is just acting like a force acting like a force when we when therefore when we find out find out the centroid and when we assume that the entire area is passing through that uh, we can disregard the entire shape of the area shape of the area doesn't matter over here as soon as we locate the centroid and as soon as so this is the entire area and this is the imaginary point called as centroid and the entire area is assumed to be acting just like a weight and if we draw an axis like this 
the the beauty of this centroidal axis lies in the fact that the moment of this area the portion of the portion of the lamina or portion of the surface above this particular line centroidal axis and its moment will definitely balance balance the moment that is generated to the the, the portion of the plane area to the left of the axis and if this is the force acting at the centroid of this particular locate this particular portion of the area and this is the moment arm with respect to the centroidal axis it will generate clockwise moment and and the the figure the centroid and the the area to the left of this axis or below this axis will generate anti clockwise moment therefore clockwise and anti clockwise moment will nullify and therefore therefore the axis drawn through the centroid of a plane figure will do, will do a some kind of a balancing act so any axis drawn with respect to passing through the centroid will definitely have a balancing act the area above the axis and the area below the axis and the and the respective moments of the areas will always balance if one is creating clockwise moment the other one will be creating anti clockwise moment therefore this plane though the 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 flutter in the air it can be held anyway anyway with a balanced position with respect to the centroidal axis therefore we need to find the centroidal axis in general in a real sense of analysis centroidal axis has a balancing act that is balancing the moments of the areas on either side of the axis therefore so algebraic sum of the moments with respect to centroidal axis must be equal to zero because if one portion of the area generates clockwise moment the other portion will be definitely invariably creating anti clockwise moment right that means centroid is to be located in order to find out the axis uh, or over, over which it pa it passes through the centroid and in order to find out whether the whether the uh, moments generated by the areas are balancing each other so it it comes in a close comparison with center of gravity of course center of gravity is a is a terminology that is defined to objects which will possess weights which will possess thickness therefore it's an imaginary point at which entire weight of the body is assumed to be concentrated so if this is the body uh, something some kind of a plate in order to balance this we have to balance exactly at the center of gravity because there is a weight acting downwards and this will be serving like a support and action and reaction will cancel away and this particular object will be in a balanced state of affairs and typical balance the weight of this which is creating some kind of an anti clockwise moment and this is creating a clockwise moment will be balanced at this particular point of fulcrum therefore this is the center of gravity and here it, there is a balancing act and here it is not balanced because weight on this side is more when compared to weight over this the weight over this particular side and if you remove the weights it will be standing still in a horizontal position because it will be balanced with respect to center of gravity now the diff different plates are getting balanced because the the sticks are held right at the point of uh, center of gravity points and here a pencil is held in a balanced state balanced state because it is being supported by the finger and this finger is held exactly at the center of gravity and here there is another plate and this happens to be the center of gravity uh, location where entire weight is assumed to be acting and there is a pivot which is supporting this and here the entire globe can be held at a single point if we if we uh, if we pinpoint our finger exactly at the center of gravity therefore center of gravity will be, will balance the moments of the weights while center of centroid will balance the moments of the areas so plane lamina is to centroid and objects with weights is to center of gravity that is a major difference we can easily locate the center of uh, centroid of elementary areas because we know them from time immemorial because they are elementary they can be derived and they can be derived from using uh, the first principles for a rectangle we know the centroid will be located at b by 2 from this end and d by 2 from this end and or it will be at the intersection of two diagonals and if it is a right angle triangle it can be proved that the centroid which will come somewhere over here 
somewhere over here uh, will be will be b by 3 from this end and h by 3 from this x axis and b by 3 from y axis or 2h by 3 from the apex 2b by 3 from this end anyway b by 3 b by, b by 3 and h by 3 is referred because the y axis is over here and x axis is over here similarly for a right angle triangle which is uh, which is oriented a little different from the previous right angle triangle the centroid will be somewhere over here somewhere over here so since we need to measure from the reference axis this is the distance along x so this is 2b by 3 it's mentioned over here and as far as this height is concerned the location of the centroid will be at h by 3 so for triangle it will be h by 3 or 2h by 3 or b by 3 or 2b by 3 depending upon the orientation of the triangle with respect to some reference axis some reference axis typically it will be x6 and yy and here it is a semicircle and this is the reference axis the centroid will be somewhere over here centroid will be somewhere over here and this is the distance and this distance happens to be from the reference axis happens to be 4r by 3 pi and along y axis there is no need to find because it is exactly at the center okay because it is symmetrical with respect to x axis symmetrical is with respect to this diagonal this uh, diametric axis yeah we'll just go through like different figures fundamental figures of course the centroidal location should be in our fingertips and of course derivation we are not doing in this tutorial uh, and any physics book will be helping us to find it out as to how we can find out the centroid of elementary figures from first principles right and here it lies over here the distance is 4 r by 3 pi and here the lies over here and y distance y bar is 4 r by 3 pi here x bar is 4 r by 3 pi like that so whether it is uh, uh, from x axis or y with respect to x axis or y axis it uh, we need to look at where reference axis is there okay so the location of the centroid is always with respect to some reference axis because only upon finding the centroid we can draw centroidal axis the first step in finding the centroid is therefore assuming some reference axis and here if this were to be a reference axis along vertical direction that is yy and this is xx and the centroid will be exactly over somewhere here so 4 r by 3 pi in this direction 4 r by 3 pi in upward direction and to be somewhere over here so as far as this segment of a circle is concerned it is symmetrical with respect to xx and the centroid will be somewhere over here and it is 2 r sin phi sin alpha divided by 3 alpha where alpha is the angle subtended uh, semi semi subtended angle that is alpha anyway anyway and if it is a uh, semi elliptical uh, planar lamina and the centroid will be over here because it is symmetrical with respect to vertical axis it has to come only on the axis of symmetry it is 4b by 3 pi and the area is pi a b by 2 and as far as this figure is concerned the centroid as we as we can guess will come somewhere over here somewhere over here so the centroid of the shaded area is measured from the uh, horizontal reference axis like this which will be 3h by 10 and as far as vertical axis is concerned it should be measured from here till here it is 3b by 4 therefore all these fundamental figures and their and their locations of their respective centra should be should be remembered remembered before we venture into composite sorry complex problems and usually in engineering engineering designs we are going to get we are going to uh, we are going to encounter composite laminas or composite surfaces or composite cross sections what's a composite cross section what's a composite lamina a composite lamina is always made out of uh, uh, maybe many 
many elementary areas. So this composite lamina is made out of a rectangular uh, area and another rectangular area measuring 10 by 12, 14 by 10 and a triangular area. And in order to find out the centroid, we should extend the, uh, the first principles. Let us see as to how we can. So this is a totally complicated figure, composite figure. Here is an area um, bounded by a curve and this is a semicircular area, a rectangular area two triangular areas and v-shaped area and we need to locate the centroid this is neither symmetrical to x nor to y now this is another composite area which involves a, a semicircular cut and a trapezium out of this trapezium uh, a semicircular cut is being made and we need to find out the centroid of this shaded area and here there is an area which looks like uh, two capsules crisscrossing and here there are protrudences but anyway anyway though they look very funny and if we fold them or if we adjust them properly we will just get out of uh, some component it may be a funnel it may be a it may be a tray it may be some other thing it may be a pipe like uh, component okay and here there is a, a big semicircle big semicircle and here is a small semicircular cut and there is another semicircle that is being imposed in order to get some kind of a shape like this right so composite areas or composite surfaces are those surfaces which are made out of uh, made out of many elementary areas and elementary areas by definition is that area or that lamina that surface wherein we can easily locate the centroid and if a composite area is given something like this, okay, this funny figure is taken in order to denote it could be any cross section, any shape. It could be of any shape. Therefore, uh, the first principle says that divide the area into innumerable number of elementary areas like this, like this. And here there are many rectangles and here there is a piece of triangle approximately and this is a trapezium like this. You divide the entire area into innumerable number of elementary areas and and find the area each and every elementary area like a1 a2 a3 a4 a n and you find and you treat them as forces now we are into a parallel force system all the elementary areas are regarded as forces and therefore we can find out the perpendicular distance of these areas which are acting at the centroid of the elementary figures uh, from y axis it may be a1 it may be x1 with respect to a1 it is x1 with respect to a2 it is x2 for a3 it is x3 for an it is xn and if we add all these uh, so called forces area turned forces into uh, uh, into a big sum algebra x sum it becomes a total area and total area happens to be the resultant as we have found out in non concurrent force system if there are parallel forces like parallel forces the resultant is nothing but their addition you add all the forces to get out with the resultant and here there are forces which are acting parallelly and the total area happens to be the resultant that will also maintain a distance from the reference axis that is called as x bar so x bar and y bar so we use Varignan's theorem we have already considered the areas to be forces therefore therefore the algebraic sum of moments of all the forces with respect to your reference axis must be equal to the moment of the resultant. Therefore, moment of this resultant, that capital A, should be equal to, that is A into X bar, should be equal to A1 into X1, plus A2 into X2, plus A3 into X3, plus A N into Xn. We will equate that only to, only to get X bar. What is the distance of the centroid from the Y axis? That is X bar. So a1 x1, a2 x2 like this, you just add this and succinctly this formula can be written like written like x bar equal to equal to it's a generic formula okay ai xi xi divided by sigma ai as i goes from 1 to n so if we add a1 a2 a3 we will get capital a that is total area and a1 into i1 a1 into x1 a1 into x1 is moment of elementary area one with respect to the reference axis that is y y axis a2 x2 is the moment of the area two with respect to reference axis 
moment is force into perpendicular distance. That's all. In the same token, we can also find out y bar. Y bar is a1 y1, a2 y2 plus a3 y3, an yn divided by a. And succinctly written, this formula will also translate into sigma ai yi as i goes from 1 to n divided by capital R sigma ai. So now we have devised a method to find out uh, to locate the centroid of any figure by treating any given figure into uh, as if it is made out of innumerable number of elementary areas. And we will use Varignan's theorem to find uh, to find the location of the centroid. That means the location of the resultant or location where resultant of all the forces are acting. And here the only difference is we consider areas of elementary figures or elementary surfaces to be the forces. And why the central location of the centroid is so important? When we design the components, length doesn't matter to an engineer or to a designer. Look at this. It's an eye section, eye beam. And we need not have to bother about the length of this eye beam because the same area of cross section repeats over the entire length in order to constitute the beam of this particular shape. So now cross section matters for this. And we will usually start with our uh, design. Any design, as a matter of fact, will will start with assumption of assumptions of uh, assumptions regarding the dimensions of the cross section. Therefore, we need to find uh, the, the very important point called a centroid because, because we can pass axis over the centroid and this centroidal axis means a lot. And here in case of a beam, a centroidal axis passing through the cross section is called as neutral axis and it is with respect to this axis, the beam is going to bend, the beam is going to rotate. And th this is the shaft and this is the important axis which passes through the centroid and this centroid is called as a pole over here and this is called as polar axis or longitudinal axis and here it is a t-shaped beam and this is the centroid because it is symmetrical only with respect to y-axis and centroid will come somewhere over here and this axis is very important and this is centroidal xx axis or neutral axis. And here this is an L-shaped cross section and the centroid will come somewhere over here outside the entire area of cross section uh, and, and we can just pass the axis and this axis is very important because they are passing through the centroid and number two the second reason is any structural action is always with reference to the centroidal axis whether it is bending or buckling, buckling in case of a column, bending in case of a beam, twisting in case of a shaft. And here it is a Z-shaped section and here is the centroid and this centroidal axis is very important. Therefore, we need to find the centroid just because we need to draw centroidal axis and centroidal axis is a predominant axis over a cross section about which some kind of a structural action will take place. Right. We will go with the solving of problems and we have chosen the very simple problem. And this is called as a T section. This is top flange and this is the bottom flange. Or this is sorry, this is the top flange and this is the web or the rib or the rib. First of all, we need to divide the area into two parts because this is one elementary area, a rectangle, and the horizontal rectangle, or this is a vertical kind of a rectangle with depth more and width less. And here uh, width more and depth less. Anyway, anyway, it's a flange. Technically, this is called as a flange and this is called as a rib or a web. So we divided the area and we know that this particular cross section is symmetrical with respect to y y axis. Axis of symmetry it will enable us to fold the figure into two parts into into only one fold and and these folds will be symmetrical. They will be um, they will be symmetrical. They will be like mirror images. Okay, and that is the axis. Apart from balancing of the moments, they will be symmetrical. So here is the symmetrical axis. And centroid has to lie on this symmetrical axis. Therefore, we need to find y bar. X bar is not required. From this end, x bar will be exactly at 50 millimeter. 
but way bar we will be unable to locate until we apply the fundamental principles therefore before we locate the centroid we need to choose a reference axis here we have chosen the reference axis uh, on the top of this top flange over here or the edge of the top flange top edge of the top flange now uh, we will feel as if they are separated one is over here the other one is over here and we will measure we will find out the area first because it is a1 y1 plus a2 y2 divided by a1 plus a2 therefore we have found a1 100 into 50 a2 120 into 50 from the given dimensions and it's over here and this is the reference axis with respect to reference axis it has the centroidal distance equal to equal to 50 by 2 that is 25 and as far as this piece is concerned this rib is concerned it has a distance of uh, it has a distance of uh, let us say 60 from here till here plus 50 60 plus 50 with reference to with respect to reference axis therefore it measures 110 that means from the reference axis the centroid of this a2 uh, area 2 or the portion 2 will be at a distance of 110 millimeter now we apply we will find the total area by just adding them together and we will apply the formula and the formula is y bar y bar equal y bar from the top reference axis a1 y1 plus a2 y2 divided by a1 plus a2 so a1 is 100 into 50 y1 is 25 a2 is 150 120 into 50 and this distance is 110 y2 is in the total area and we have got 71.37 millimeter from the top and where is the centroid for this question here it is and we can also find out the centroidal distance from the bottom now we can just transfer this axis to this particular point then it will become centroidal xx axis now we will take another simple example this is a i section of course of course it is not symmetrical with respect to x axis because of different areas configuration so this is 80 by 80 here it is 120 by 50 therefore this is however this is symmetrical with respect to y axis because this y axis will pass through the centroid therefore therefore we need to find y bar x bar there is no need and if you have the reference axis over here x bar is from here till here half the width of this particular flange okay because it is symmetrical with respect to y axis therefore we have divided this is this composite area into one top flange two the web or the rib the three the bottom flange okay which is something like this now we will we will find out y bar by having a reference axis this section is symmetrical with respect to centroidal y y axis therefore we need to find y bar locate the centroid with respect to line along the bottom flange here it is this is the reference axis now we will we will just position the independent the individual components individual areas one two three associated with respect to this reference axis and we will measure the centroidal distance so from here till here it is 80 plus 100 plus 25 here it is so and as far as this portion is concerned it is 80 the bottom portion and 50 up till here so up to the centroid of 2 it is 130 similarly for this it is 80 by 2 that is 40 so now we have individual areas a1 a2 a3 and we have individual centroidal distances with respect to reference axis which happens to be the bottom flange line bottom of the bottom flange line and we just multiply them and we will just divide by the total area only to get the centroidal location of the centroid with respect to the reference axis now this is a1 this is a2 that is a3 so now we will apply the formula it is 6000 into 205 sorry it should be 6000 we will just change this 6000 into 205 and and 5000 into 130 a1 into y1 a2 into y2 a3 into y3 a1 plus a2 plus a3 so we got 122.75 millimeter from this axis here it is 122.75 and this is the center now we can move this axis which was glued here now we can just move this over here 
no glow is required because this particular the axis will have a balancing act the moment of the area above the axis that is this portion should be equal to the moment of the area which is below the axis therefore we will move it over here then this becomes a predominant axis where some structural action or some behavior pattern is seen whenever these components uh, components having this particular cross section behaves against the applied load so with this we have understood what is centroid and how to locate the centroid the importance of centroid so in our next tutorial we will come out with uh, little uh, little complex cross sections or complex shaped uh, uh, shaped composite figures or or plane laminas and we will just find out the centroid and before we go for the next tutorial we will just uh, centroid x axis is located just uh, uh, just just uh, uh, recall as to what are the fundamental steps in locating the centroid of any given figure divide the area into elementary areas this is rather easy we may find out few rectangles few triangles few semicircles few quadrant of circles else so etc because we know their centroids can be easily located because they happen to be elementary areas now the question you have to question we have to question ourselves whether the given figure is symmetrical with respect to any axis if it is symmetrical to x axis we need to find x bar okay uh, and if it is symmetrical to y axis we need to find y bar with re with reference to some reference axis either selected at the bottom of the figure or at the top of the figure so if the figure is symmetrical with respect to x x axis we need to take y y reference axis either to the left side or to the right side right now if it is symmetrical with respect to any axis Uh, find the location of the centroid over the axis of symmetry itself that is if it is, if the figure is symmetrical to with respect to y axis you find y bar and if it is symmetrical with respect to x axis we find x bar and if it is not symmetrical with respect to any of the axis then first of all we need to decide about the reference axis reference axis running horizontally that is x x and reference axis running vertically that is y y then with respect to these two axes we have to find both x bar and y bar using the fundamental formula the x bar equal to sigma ai x i divided by sigma a and y bar equal to sigma ai y i divided by capital uh, sorry sigma a and sigma a happens to be sigma ai happens to be the total area or area in its the, in, in the entirety of the figure so with this we have closed uh, the, we are closing this tutorial and we have understood the fundamental concepts of centroid as to why it should be located and do its significance our next tutorial will bring uh, some moderate problems of moderate complexity and high complexity until then bye and if you are like this video kindly subscribe to my channel